From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hi, dear listeners, and welcome to another episode of Ropecast. Thank you for inviting us to your iPod. This is Peter Tischer. Hello, I'm Roger Charlton. Hi, Roger. Um, Peter, you're looking a little less stressed out. <laughs> I think you have just moved house and maybe you're settled in now? Uh, well, settled in. There's still a lot of cartons that need unpacking. Well, but yes. yes, yes, we have moved. Yeah. What kind of house is it? Um, it's, I think, what you would call a semi-detached house, a semi-detached house. Right. Uh, meaning so you have basically two houses that are sandwiched together. And, and we have, of course, one half of that. And is one the mirror image of the other, so to speak? Yes, I think the other house has a little balcony on the side that we don't have. Yeah. But other than that, it's exactly the same, yes. Because I think in Britain, <coughs> if you are looking for a semi, then you expect them to look like this, to, that to be mirror images of each other. Yeah, yeah, from the outside, you basically can't tell. Or you can say just a semi yes, for the house. Yes, ah, yeah. okay, only new semi-detached. Okay. I don't think the Americans have these things, do they? No, no. Well, they have a lot of space. Yeah. So <laughs> I think their population density, so people per square mile or per square kilometer, is about one-tenth of the population density of Germany. So basically, they have individual houses. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of individual houses in England. And England is, in terms of population, the densest area of the United Kingdom. So is density it? does not necessarily go along with the kinds of buildings. Uh, right. So what, what kind of buildings do you guys li like to live in? Well, with land prices increasing, a lot of people have maybe taken what they regard as second best and bought a terrace house. A ter is that a house with terrace garden? No, no. This is, this is um, houses built in a row. Ah, uh, okay. Probably all looking alike. Mm -hmm. With the very often these classical ones with the bricks, yes, uh, brick front sort of. That's right. Ah, okay. Yes, okay. we still make widespread use of brick in mm -hmm. the UK. Okay. So we've got terraced houses, we've got semi-detached houses, we've got mm. detached houses, which are the individual ones yes. that don't yeah. that are not attached to anything. A lot of people in the UK actually go for a detached house. If they have the money, then they like to be on their own to have a garden around the house. Ah, okay, okay. So what exactly does your house look like? Well, it's a, it's a two-story house yeah. with a rather small backyard. Uh, a yard, a garden? Yeah, Americans say backyard. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, it's, it has a little bit of grass there yeah. in the back, a lawn. And it has a patio in the back. Yeah. So something you can sit on and... Uh, and have your barbecue. Have your barbecue. That's yeah. very important in Zarland, of <laughs> course. But I think for Americans it would be as well. Yeah. don't know if the British do a lot of barbecues. Well, it depends on the weather. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a recent fashion for patio heaters. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it won't go that far. Um, it, and it has, uh, out front we have what we'd call a driveway in yes. the U.S. And, uh, and a garage? It has a small garage, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, with an electric door, which I like very much. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you said you don't have a balcony on your house. Uh, no, no balcony. We'd love to have one because the house does have a nice view from the top floor. Yeah. But, yeah, that can still be built onto it. Right. If you're looking for a house in Britain, you'd be particularly interested in how many bedrooms there are. Uh, so you're asking me how many bedrooms I have? Well, we don't count it that way no. in, in Germany. I've never really understood the bedroom thing, but we would probably say for British purposes that's a three-bedroom house. Yeah. But why don't you count total rooms? It's very strange. I mean, Germans who move to Britain, first of all, want to know how big the place is, how many yes. square meters. Yes, square meters. That and I could tell you easily, 125. But most advertisements in Britain don't even mention that. They tell you how many bedrooms, maybe how many reception rooms there are, and that's about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. As reception room is anything close to a living room or that would be downstairs, so downstairs a hallway rooms. and then Uh huh. But how do the British then know how big an apartment it is? If they read a small ad like that and says a uh, I don't know, three bedroom house, um they'd have to somewhat be able to guess well, how large and, they, just, they just phone? They go and look at it or or phone up, yes. Ah, okay. So you can't tell from the ad how large the place is. No. Okay, Just that's the number of rooms. 
Oh, okay. Well, Americans do the same. They also put in the bedrooms in the ads. Yeah. And the second thing, I don't know if the British do that, they will put in the number of bathrooms as oh, well. Right. Because yes. you might have, I don't know, five bedrooms and three bathrooms. Don't know if they ever use them. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> We're talking about whole families, but what about in your student days, what kind of accommodation did you have back then? Uh, I don't know what you call that in English. The first thing I had was you basically had just this one room where you lived in. A bed sit. A bed sit. Bed sitting room. Ah, okay. Yeah. With a little kitchen, what I'd call a kitchenette. Yes. Um, that's, well, yeah, then I had a bed sit. <laughs> <laughs> I also lived in a student dorm. Uh-huh. Um, that's um, a hall of residence, probably. At a British university. Okay, where well, you have individual small apartments, basically yeah. bed sits. Yes. But in America, you call that a dormitory or a dorm. So you've come a long way since those days. Oh, yeah. But uh, I still have to unpack now. That is the bad part about it. So <laughs> I think we better wrap up this rope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Goodbye and be sure to tune in next time. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.